And sure. not to mention the connection between people that have anxiety and acne. Guess what? They're both linked to the gut. So if you have acne and anxiety, you got to investigate your gut. Please, please, yep. please. Yep. No, 100%. And again, um, you know, outside of that, you know, we would look at different toxins down the road. If we need to look at heavy metals, there's different tests we can look at to do a challenge test on your metals with a DMPS or some kind of a challenge agent. We can definitely look at mold. If there's mold in the environment, that's important to look at. And again, if you're in an environment where you feel better leaving that environment, then there could be some mold in there, especially if a history of water damage that was unresolved. Definitely want to get your mold looked at or just your home looked at too, especially if it's something that the whole family is dealing with. Just get the home looked at to start. It's usually cheaper and more effective out of the gates. Yeah, well said. And, and heavy metals too. I'm glad you brought that up. You know, mercury and other heavy metals, they can stimulate the nervous system and cause issues. So if you have a bunch of silver fillings in your mouth, you've got to consider that. May not be your number one smoking gun. Sometimes it is, but heavy metals are a, a big problem. And even detox too can make people feel too sick. I mean, you and I have seen this many times. Other practitioners that have handled people before they come to us or they've done something too aggressively with chelation or other detox methods, and then they've ended up worse. So there's like a tightrope, and that's where the art of medicine and comes in everything's not just like cookie cutter so too much is a problem too little is a problem and that depends on gut and detox and beta glucuronidase and liver and all of it so like if your friend got better and you tried what your friend did and you didn't do well well that might not be your right protocol yeah so. exactly and then just to kind of highlight the the nutrients um in compared to talk therapy uh Julia Ross is out there. She's like a, a family therapist person, but she's done a lot of books on amino acids and diet. And she had different clients that she used to use talk therapy for, for years and years and years and said, Hey, let me just try adding in some amino acid therapy to their protocol. And let's see how they do with their talk therapy. When we add in the amino acids, she started to do that. And then these patients would come the next week and they'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just good. I, I just don't even feel the need to talk about it. I'm over it. And it's like, wow. So it's like, it gives people the equipment to kind of like process these issues. And again, I think talk therapy acutely may be fine. It's just when you're talking about the same thing for years and years and years, you're probably not getting to the root cause, right? This is probably just covering up something else, you know? Now, I think it's better than being on a drug, right? So if it's helpful and you don't need a drug, that's great. Um, but in the end, you know, if you can do some of these nutritional things along with it, you may find that you can just deal with the issues better. You know, I, the analogy I get patients is try dealing with difficult problems around the home and not having slept for a couple nights. You're going to lose your patience with your wife, with your kids. You're not going to be able to think right. You'll be foggy, get some good night's sleep, and then wake up and deal with the problem. It's like, you're going to be way more equipped to deal with it. I think that's kind of how brain chemistry uh, works when you're dealing with these stressors. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I remember in that book too, talking about how like amino acids were administered right at the beginning of a session. And then the people would just immediately like smile or loosen up or relax. And so it's amazing. No matter how much you talk, long story short, I know we've beat the drum on this for a minute, but last thing, no matter how much you talk, it's never going to change your levels of serotonin just by talking it out. If you have a gut problem that's affecting your nutrient absorption, which is affecting the tryptophan and the conversion with the B6 over to 5-HTP and then over to serotonin and then to melatonin. So sleep issues too. So skin, sleep, anxiety, they're all connected. Depression, we've already talked about that. This person here is putting a bunch of question marks like they're mad at us. What is the connection between Accutane and depression? It's just a side effect. It's, it's a side effect of the drug. It could just be a side effect, it, yeah. Yeah, just a side effect of the drug. That's all it is. Yep. Yeah. So certain drugs, you know, are going to have side effects. Ibuprofen can cause ulcers and liver issues, right? Just a drug side effect.